Hello everyone. I want to thank you all for taking the time out to welcome me to the University of Gloucester. I'm very honoured to be speaking to you right now. My name is Vic Bain and I'm a full-time campaigner for greater equality, diversity and inclusion in music. I've worked in various parts of the music industry for 25 years, but for the past 15 years I've worked mainly with songwriters and composers. I run a membership organisation called BASCA, the British Academy of Songwriters, Composers and Authors, of which I was Chief Executive for six years. And it was my experiences there that inspired my passion and interest for greater diversity, because songwriting is such a male-dominated sector. I'm now a consultant specialising in working with companies and initiatives who want to improve their diversity. At the moment, I'm working with disability access charity Attitude is Everything, and that's hugely important work. I'm also a board director of the Incorporated Society of Musicians, an organisation of over 10,000 musician members, and is doing vital campaigning to ensure musicians are supported as much as possible right now. I'm a board director of a music tech startup called Delic and a trustee of a wonderful charity called Parents and Carers in Performing Arts. I've also just founded a not-for-profit organisation called the F List for Music. This is a community interest company and it's going to officially launch on the 23rd of November. I'll talk more about that in a moment. This year has been extraordinary for everyone. We are all in lockdown again and you must have great worries about the future. I can assure you Working hard and sticking out your education will be the best investment you will ever make. Even now, I know people are losing their jobs and the music industry is in turmoil, but you are honestly in the best place doing the right thing for your future. As well as my work, I'm also studying for a part-time PhD, looking at women's careers in the music industry. So you might be able to tell I am hugely supportive of education. I can unequivocally say I would not have had the opportunities in my career if it was not for my education. I'm from a working class background. Now I moved around a lot when I was younger, but I'm originally from the Northeast. And I took a long route to get my, my degree. I took a year out and then I, I went back to my local college. I did a BTEC, a HND, and then finally a, a BA in music and performing arts. It was worth all of that time and hard work. When I moved to London, it was the one thing that I was asked for wherever I applied. It allowed me to get a foot in the door and have a really interesting career in, in music. So I think um, there've definitely been advances in uh, music education over the past 25 years since I graduated. I think in six years, of my music education, we may have spent a handful of days talking about the real world out there. So music business degrees, which I know the University of Gloucester has a really great course, were not even a thing back then. And I think they're really, really uh, uh, fantastic courses now. The music industry is a complicated and complex machine. So to learn about how it works and its principles before you even enter the industry is something I wish I had benefited from. So I will talk a little about my research and some of the diversity statistics in the music industry. As some, as some of you may know, I published an extensive analysis last year called Counting the Music Industry. It's essentially a gender audit of over 300 record labels and music publishing companies. Why did I do that? Well, I was very interested in the professional pipeline for songwriters and composers. In my role as CEO of BASCA, I had conducted an analysis of over 60 years worth of winners of the Ivor Novello Awards, which we ran. There I discovered only 6% of winners over six decades were women. And in fact, that figure has only gone up to 10% over, um, over the past 10 years since 2010. When I inquired as to why this was, I was told, well, the music publishers entered works mainly by male writers. Thinking about why that was, I started looking at their rosters online. Now, the music industry is really transparent. The vast majority of labels and, and publishers have their entire roster online because it's their shop windows. 
So I set about copying the rosters directly off their websites and analyzed them. It took nearly four months of full-time work and the full 50 page report you can you can um, read you can download it off my website but the highlight statistics were 14 percent of uk songwriters and composers are female just under 20 percent of uk musicians and artists signed to labels are female 14 percent and 20 percent there are some genre differences so the best genre for women is classical music for, for performers, for labels, this is. Classical music has just over 30% women. The, the worst were well, the darker genres, heavy metal, drum and bass, and grime at only 6%. So I discussed these initial findings with various people, senior leaders across the music industry, and the feedback I was told was, well, women, um, women aren't as interested in music as men. Women aren't as good at music than men. And women don't participate in music education as much as men. These were opinions that really surprised me. I thought we had moved on from views like this, but it seems they're still deeply embedded. So I decided to look at education, uh, working with the Higher Education Statistics Authority, which is a government funded body that collects data from all universities. Reviewing their data over a five year period, I found 46% of UK music performance degree students are female. 42% of those studying music business and theory degrees were female. 25% of those studying music composition were female. And 13% of those studying audio and engineering degrees were female. So you can see there is some sex segregation by subject type, but the fact is overall for all music um, degree subjects over 44 percent of music degree students in 2018 were female so just under half so women are just as interested in music as men and they are just as talented and yet only 20 percent of sign artists are female and 14 percent of, of writers are female so there's definitely a gap that's why i've set up the f list initiative this is an online directory of four and a half thousand female musicians and bands with women in them. It's freely available and it is for festival and event promoters, record labels, commissioners, journalists, fans, anyone who wants to find a female musician. And I'm just about to launch a new improved website on the 23rd of November. So watch this space. And to all of you music performance students, if you have a website, that we can link to, do create a profile and join in. Now, my intention is not to put you off, all you female music performance students out there. Forewarned is forearmed. We need to call out the disparities that exist in the sector and do something about them. So that is the current data we have on the creative side of the industry. We then turn to the workforce. UK Music have just published another diversity report just a week or so ago, and their data shows that 65% of entry level music workforce jobs are, are done by women. So there's a really high and growing percentage of women entering the, the music industry workforce. However, it seems that they are um, sort of segregated into jobs which do not have promotional prospects as, as much as the jobs that the men do. Um, only a third of higher earners are female. Only a third, a third of the over 45s are, are female. This almost completely matches the UK government gender pay gap report, uh, which I analysed this summer and again showed that women consist of a majority uh, of the lowest quartile jobs and only a third in the top quartile. So what's going to happen going forward? Will the situation improve for women in music? I really hope so. The vast numbers of women flooding into the industry is a reason for hope. So I have still got recommendations though to, um, to education and for, for music students as well. With education, providers and this is you know anyone from music hubs to conservatoires and universities 
I really call on them to make sure that they have good pathways and entry routes with the, the, the music industry. There needs to be lots of communication and collaboration between education and music industry. I also think uh, music technology competence should be offered to all female music students at all stages. And the encouragement of female students to play traditionally masculine instruments too, break those stereotypes. Young women, I, I think the main thing I can say to you is be prepared. Um, and, but also, you know, there's lots of help out there, which I uh, urge you to go find online. You can, you can Google, you can find lots and lots of support networks and mentoring and sponsorship programs such as um, those that are run by She Said So and The Cat's Mother. There's lots of really fantastic organizations out there. I would also say to all musicians and writers, there's you know, funding pots and grants that are, are, are run by organiza organizations such as the PRS Foundation and Help Musicians. I would urge you to go find them, look on their websites as well. Also sign up to the F list, make sure that you have a, a good profile on there. And it's a really important to know your rights. I would also recommend, uh, especially for performers, but also anyone who's a professional working in, in, in music can join the, uh, the ISM, the Incorporated Society of Musicians, and they offer really good uh, advice, careers advice and legal help as well. But, but and also I'd just like to sort of um, uh, end with that with my recommendations to female students to, to really say you know you make the change you know you can you can you, you are future you can you can change the diversity statistics in the music industry now I know that this is an extraordinary year uh, for you and for, for for every sector really but for the for the music industry it has been extraordinary with venues and festivals closed Next year, I believe there will be some stringent hygiene and mitigation methods which will allow us to bring back music in some form or another. It might be a while before we are fully operating, but if there's one thing about the music industry is it's full of very creative people and I am sure we'll come up with some, some great solutions. The music industry has shifted entirely online. Um, you know, the music industry went through a, a technological digital revolution two, over the past two decades, and that has really sped up this past six months. So I think, um, you know, solutions such as artificial intelligence, hologram technology, virtual reality, all of these things will really come into their own over the next year, and it's very exciting. We're experiencing what business theorists Joseph Schumpeter called creative destruction. So we have to rebuild and reimagine the future. And you are an essential part of that. And your education is an essential part of that. Stick with it and you will not be disappointed. And out of this crisis, I think we will emerge stronger and more flexible, and I hope more inclusive and sustainable too.